Hey guys, it's Ability here, and before we get into the Agility Eliotrope set, I was asked to present the Chance Pandawa's damage. That was from a few videos ago when I mage the Chance Pandawa set, so if you missed that, feel free to go back and watch the mages. This is the damage portion of that video, which I did not include in the original, so we're gonna jump right into it. Here is the Chance Pandawa. Alright guys, I have the Pandawa here in the Astrub Dojo, and I am free to play, which is why I'm an Astrub, so I am not able to wear the Snail Mate pet which is minus 40 critical damage because I'm not wearing it. And then I also have not yet quested the Vulbus or the Ebony. So this damage preview will be slightly off of the final damage numbers when the set is complete. However, I want to give you guys an idea. So the turn one, the Panda's mostly going to be playing tank, I believe. However, in dungeons where that's not necessary, my goal is going to be just blitz through the mobs with Chance Panda. So my turn one is going to be double Vuln and then I go back into normal mode and I use ethical wand and ethical wand oh wow no crit shoot but that's okay because I get to do it turn two as well so it's 2k there and then if I'm in line with an enemy I can use double hooch which is insane damage no crit again there we go there's a crit so huge damage when I do crit and again I'm not wearing the snail mate pet so my crit is actually down 15% from what it should be and then I'll reapply Vuln and I can do Hooch and Tipple and with the Vulbus buff and other buffs as well like Ebony the Panda head really really hits a lot it's insane like Hooch hitting 1500 and then Ethical Wand with weapon skill on hits so much 2300 that's without Vulbus final damage snail mate which will increase it by 120 and without ebony so the panda just hits so much i'll do one more fight to show the other chance variants i also didn't show melancholy so i will take distillation alcohol sue and i'll show melancholy as well so i do double vuln and then i can do a melancholy from range so this could be cast from very far away and also hit the AoE so melancholy no crit 861 however if I was wearing the snail mate and it did crit it would hit 1200 and then we have distillation here which hits 1200 in an AoE if it crits pretty decent and then we have this one's lifesteal alcohol I don't think I'm saying that right Alkashu. Uh, Alkashu 900 on a crit and it is lifesteal which is pretty nice and then if I do weapon skill and then use the ethical wand it hits nothing because I don't crit it hits about 2300 it says so that's pretty decent and then I can do double melancholy as well 1200 and 1200 so the chance panda really hits a lot it's insane i'm so excited for when i don't have to play the tank set and uh from here let's get into the agility eliotrope set so here is the agility eliotrope set all laid out it needs three one percent exos a range on the alistar ring an mp on the jammy jack glove and an ap on the stalic shield so it needs the maximum number of exos possible really except for summons however this set actually gives a incredible amount of summons five not that i'll be using them but just something to note if you're an agility osa who's looking to do pvm um, it's a 12 6 6 set with low vitality so it's a glass cannon set if you include the percent power, it has 1,450 pow uh, agility, which is quite a lot, 173 air damage, which is higher than average, and it includes a cloudy dofus, which will be part of the Eliotrope's playstyle. So the set is pure glass cannon. It is a very strong set, especially considering it's 12 AP with this amount of agility and range. I know that Agility Eliotrope doesn't necessarily use range, however there are some spells like Therapy that do benefit from it. So um, this is the set laid out and let's jump into maging the first item. So 
So this Dalek shield comes from the old 8-man PVM team, this was the Rogue shield, however I'm switching it over to the Eliotrope because it does not give dodge and the Eliotrope is agility so they do not need dodge and that's why the Rogue is taking the Stalic shield that does give dodge. So this shield was made by me about three years ago and it has decent enough stats for PVM. It's definitely not good stats but for, for the Eliotrope it's perfect. So. That is this item and we can move on to the next. So on this Jammy Jack Cloak, I decided to do a 1% spell damage mage and that's because percent damage, percent final damage, whether it's ranged, spell, weapon, melee, any of those will apply better to classes that hit high amounts of damage in one hit, which is pretty much exactly Eliotrope. So here, I get the 1% spell, and then I fix the neutral res, the summons crits back, and I can move on to the next item. So for this Jammy Jack amulet, it is also a leftover item from the previous 8-man team, and this amulet has a 20 agility over mage, which is pretty much exactly equivalent to a 1% spell damage mage, so I decided even though the rest of the stats surely could be improved, it's good enough for a PVM Eliotrope and I'll save myself some time from not remaging it. So now we can move on to the next item. So for this bluster belt, I also decided to put 1% spell damage on it. The reason that I decided spell damage and not ranged damage is because I want to be able to have the opportunity to swap this set around for future characters. So here I get 1% spell, the range crits back, and we can move on to the next item. So for this Alistair crown, it is the last item that I have that's a leftover from the previous team, and this mage is very weird. It's not good per se, but it's, it's very strange, because not only does it have 2% range damage, which is a lot, but it also has a 28 vitality over mage, which is uh, just enough vitality to bring the Eliotrope over 4,000 vitality. So that is the reason I decided to keep it. It certainly could be improved, but it's good enough. So next item. So on these Alistar boots, I decided to go for a 100 vitality over mage. And that's only because I'm trying to get the team's vitality to be around 4,000 on each character. And that's because the main source of heals that I have are from the Eliotrope and they are percent HP based. So for the heals to be worthwhile, like worth the AP cost, I need at least about 4,000 base HP. So here I have a few tries at some raw vitalities. I'm just going to get rid of some extra sync that I have first. And then I get to put the rest of it into the raw vitality attempts. I need 100 vitality over mage for it to be a keepable mage. So here I go. I get seven tries and the first one actually critical successes. And then, so that means I get actually eight tries. So now I'm putting in the eighth one since I got a crit. It doesn't land, but I did get 100 over and the MP crits back as well. Next item. So I decided to put the range exo mage on this Alistar ring and that's because it only had a summon for sync and it didn't already give a range which a lot of my items already did. So here the summons drops and I am going to fix up the stats and try and get them close to perfect before trying the exo mage. The summon does not critical success back however the AP parry gets a crit and I decide that these are good enough. This is the 23rd try and it lands, so that was very lucky. 23 tries and we can move on to the next item. So for this Mantax, I decided to put 1% spell damage on it as well. It's funny putting spell damage on a weapon, especially a usable weapon like a Mantax. However, it makes sense because if I ever wanted to swap this set to say like an Agility Uginak or Fekka, it could be used melee as well. So that's why I decided spell damage. And the Mantax actually was the most expensive mage in this set, and that's because 
There's no source of sync on it, so I decided to go for a transcendence spell damage rune. I tried a lot without using the transcendence rune, however it didn't work. So here I get the hunting weapon with pretty good stats on it except for the wisdom which is a little bit low. And I had been maging this weapon already for a few hours and it wasn't working too well, so I'm really hesitating on whether I want to transcendence rune it at these stats. And I decide, crit the whiz, it works out, go for the transcendence rune, double check that it's maged by me, double check that the stats are good enough, and here comes the moment. Boom, the axe is done and we can move on to the next item. I decided to put the MP of this set on the Jammy Jack glove, and that's because it only gives a range for sync and a lot of my other items also give range or give something that is of higher sync value for me to mage with. So the MPXO for the Jammy Jack glove only took 27 tries, which is so lucky. And there you see the 27th rune land, and that's the final item, and let's move into a damage test with this new Eliotrope set. Alright guys, I have the agility Eliotrope here in the dojo, and I will make note that I'm not wearing my Brockheart because I'm free to play currently, and I'm not wearing a Vulbus or Ebony because I have not yet quested for them, so this damage preview will be slightly lower than the final set, however it will still give you an idea of what the agility Eliotrope is useful for. So the Agility Eliotrope is wearing a Cloudy Dofus. This is because I want to spend my even turns preparing to support my team, whether that's heals, positioning, buffing, stuff like that. And on odd turns, that's when I want to focus on damage so that I get the maximum buff from the Cloudy. So here, since it's an odd turn, I will set up my portals like this, and then I will do double insult and a sermon and then since now this is an even turn i want to be focusing as much as possible on buffing myself for um, the next cloudy upturn and this means that i would be like healing my team and doing stuff like that on these turns so that now i can let's see if this is portal one and two I believe this should work. Yep. And now I can do this and this. So <laughs> massive amounts of damage coming through from the Eliotrope. 2k, 2k, 2.7k. Um, that's pretty insane. So that's on odd turns and then on even turns I could be giving AP, MP, power, heals to my teammates. So I'm pretty excited to see this Eliotrope in action and uh, I think they're gonna hit a lot. So with the Eliotrope complete all that leaves now are the two IOP sets and the team will be fully maged and ready to start questing for the Dofus eggs. So if you guys enjoy these types of maging videos, make sure to let me know and I can continue to do them for the IOP sets as well. This has been Ability and I'll catch you next time.